Hello there and welcome. This video is about everlasting life and eternal life as opposed to immortality. The divinely bestowed gift of blessedness in God's presence that endures without end. This relates especially to the quality of life in this age and to both the quality and duration of life in the age to come. The key to understanding the biblical meaning of these terms is the Bible's use of the word eternal. The Old Testament teaching, God is eternal, in Deuteronomy 33:27 in Psalm 10:16 and 48:14 Scripture does not provide philosophical reflection on this fact but assumes it the Lord is the rock eternal as in Isaiah 26:4 and the eternal king as in Jeremiah 10:10 10, 10. God's word rooted in his being and will is likewise eternal as in Psalm 119.89, as are his righteous laws, Psalm 119.60, his ways, Hab 3.6, and his kingdom or dominion, Daniel 4.3, Daniel 4.34. Since God is eternal, so are his love, 1 Kings 10.9, his blessings, Psalm 21, 6, and all other attributes and benefits. They endure without end. As long as God exists, so do they. His love endures forever, in quotes, is repeated 26 times in Psalm 136 alone. Elsewhere in the Psalms, quote, forever, end of quotes, is used to describe God's reign, 9-7, his protection, 12-7, his plans, 33-11, the inheritance of his people, 37-18, his throne, 55-19, his rule, 66-7, his remembrance of his covenant, 105-8, his righteousness, 111.3, his faithfulness, 117.2, his statutes, Psalms 119.111, Psalms 119.152, and his name, 135.13. But who is God really, you might be asking, so let's take a deeper look at that now. In Genesis 1.26 of the King James Version, it says, And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness. So it's really important to notice how it says our instead of in my image. So God is plural. So if we look at the Blue Letter Bible, Genesis 1.26 again, where it says, And God said let us make man in our image after our likeness we'll notice that God according to Strong's concordance is H430 and now let's take a look at what H430 means exactly Strong's H430 entry 1 Eloach Eloach second entry Elohim, Elohim, and the third entry, Eloach, Eloach. So expanding on Elohim, number one plural in number, 
It means rulers, judges, either as divine representatives at sacred places or as reflecting divine majesty and power. So does that mean that God was creating us in the image of angels, divine ones, rulers and judges, gods and goddesses, just like God himself? Uh, I guess that is the million dollar question. Other Old Testament books offer abundant additional affirmation of these and other never-ending aspects of God or his saving provisions. Some deny awareness of a personal significant eternity in most Old Testament scripture and history. A prominent segment of modern biblical scholarship would concur that in Israel there was no belief in life after death. It is true that many biblical characters, like some who study them, seem oblivious to their eschatological destiny. They show little awareness of a transcendent world order in which they will be personally involved. A divinely ordained future imposing imperatives on the present. It is like true, it is likewise true that Old Testament awareness of eternal realities is less specific and complete than that of the New Testament. Yet the progressive nature of biblical revelation, as well as the necessarily restricted scope of each Old Testament book, should be borne in mind. Many central biblical doctrines, for example, the Trinity, the Incarnation, Divine Self-Sacrifice for Sin, are only a dumbbraided in earlier biblical history to be fleshed out in the fullness of time. The numerous Old Testament references to the Lord's future and thus to the future of those who trust in Him leave little room for insisting that the Old Testament contains no inkling of a life beyond the present world. Such insistence is understandable where enlightenment or postmodern assumptions, methods, and conclusions are dogmatically embraced. The Old Testament does not seem to conceive of eternity in purely abstract terms as a state of timelessness, as a static state of timelessness. The Greek word aeon, spelled A-I-O-N, in brackets, age, era, lengthy time, eternity, end of brackets, in the Septuagint and New Testament corresponds to the Hebrew Old Testament's Olam, which is a long time, eternity. Neither word as used in scripture answers to the notion of eternity, that word is in quotes, that shows up in the ancient philosophies of Plato and Aristotle, for Plato, eternity is a timeless and transcendent state totally outside the dimension of time. For Aristotle, as for Thomas Aquinas, who followed him at this point, eternity, quote, becomes known from two characteristics. First, from the fact that whatever is in eternity is interminable, minimal, that is, lacking beginning and end. Second, from the fact that eternity itself lacks successiveness, existing entirely at once. Total simul. End of quotes. And that's from Aquinas Summa 1, 10, 1. In this view, eternity is a motionless, changeless state, remote and qualitatively distinct from time, Time and eternity are antithetical, and eternity is accessible to human thought only by logical speculation that views God, not as the personal, living, historically self-revealing being described in Scripture, but as the inscrutable, quotes, unmoved first mover, end of quotes, of Aristotelian reasoning. This understanding has had great influence on Western theology and on the way many Christians, even today, understand 
eternity and eternal life when they encounter them in the Bible. The Old Testament, like the New, resists this time-eternity dualism. True, it speaks of a coming age from which evil will be banished and for which God's life and glory will be determinative for all that exists and takes place. This is quite different from the current world order, but that age has points of continuity with the present one because the God of that age is at the same time the God of the present age allowing for the presence of Satan and evil in this present evil age, Galatians 1.4, until they meet their final end. His reign extends for all time and over all times. <clears throat> this means that the temporal order has redemptive potential as the sphere in which God's spirit the spirit of the incarnate and risen Jesus Christ works out his will in human affairs. History, while it cannot fully contain the reality of the transcendent God, also is not capable of receiving and responding to his presence. The incarnation offers abundant proof of this fact, and eternity, while it lies chronologically between temporal life in the here and now is not in all respects qualitatively remote and aloof from it. We may thus look to biblical revelation as descriptive of God's presence in and intent for both the present world order and the coming one. We need not turn from scripture to a temporal philosophical idealism for normative insight into the nature of eternity Central Park Intrusion Zone, risk of death. Central Park Intrusion Zone, risk of death. I know you're there. That's why I'm interested in her. Your horror's from Eric God of the heavens. I'm flattered, Nicopola, wretched human. You're the greatest mystery of nature I've ever come across. Some of the vertebrate animals on this planet shed their skin. You are going through the same process. Young women like her are rare, extremely rare, rare, extremely rare. There are only a few of them in the entire universe. They don't even know who they are themselves or the power they have. You're going to need someone to take you home. What, what, what power? The greatest power of all. The power to procreate with gods. Okay, so the creator of that movie is named Enki, and Enki is also a Sumerian god who sits on a cube, which is known as Saturn, basically, which is, uh, well, it's not good. It's, <laughs> a cube is confining and restricting, and it's what keeps us in this world instead of um, spiraling into our most godlike self, etc., etc.,
So just to expand on that, according to Wikipedia, Henki is a god in Sumerian mythology later known as Ea in Akkadian and Babylonian mythology. He was originally patron god of the city of Erudu, but later the influence of his cult spread throughout. Throughout Mesopotamia and to the Canaanites, Hittites, and Hurrians. So here's some of the artwork I found by Hanky Bilal, the um, movie director of Immortal. Kind of interesting and pretty scary to say the least. And here's this interesting red thing which kind of looks like CERN to me with the eight <clears throat> bars or whatever you want to call those, the eight branches stemming out there. Here's the real CERN. Let's take another look at that now. Hmm. Kind of looks similar, don't you think? Imagine what that Freemason symbol is doing on that picture. It's interesting. Mm -hmm. 